All right, guys, we're back in my garage for another video. And first of all, I guess this is my first YouTube apology. I didn't expect to have to do this so soon. But in my last video, I did not include an intro. And apparently that was extremely jarring and discomforting for a lot of you all. I sincerely apologize. And I promise you it will never happen again, probably. Now, in this video, we're going to be installing the TMS slash Bimmer Network plug and play kit for a Motive Reflex controller. I'm going to be installing it on my F3340i, and the whole goal behind the plug and play kit is to avoid the wiring issues that some people run into with the standard harness that comes with the Motive Reflex. Now, the good news is I have installed the standard harness as well on my 440i. So in this video, we'll go ahead and go through how the plug and play kit works and how it installs. And at the end, I'll do a little bit of a comparison with how the job went on my 340 versus my 440. And hopefully that can help you make the decision on which version of the wiring harness is right for you. Also, keep in mind, I will have links to the Motive Reflex and the plug and play controller in the video description. And so if you guys are interested, you can buy it there. It does help support the channel. And my discount code gives you a few bucks off as well. So hopefully you guys find this video useful. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and open this up. Again, this is the new Tensility Motorsports Bimmer Network plug and play reflex harness. So this just kind of avoids a lot of the tapping and kind of trying to identify wires and stuff that normally comes with a reflex. So here we've got the actual reflex box itself. We've got our low pressure fuel sensor for fuel pressure. And then these are the main things that we care about. So these are the wiring harnesses that will be able to plug into your existing harnesses so that you can just plug it in and not have to actually tap wires. So this is really key because if you guys are concerned about counting pins, counting wires, potentially damaging pins on your DME, this avoids all of that. This kind of installs like a piggyback. So you're going to be splitting the connectors for each of the sensors and signals that you're trying to access. One side will plug into the sensor itself and the other side will plug into the engine harness so that way you can get all the data you need without having to tap a single wire and of course it's 100 percent reversible because these just simply unplug like a regular plug so this is going to be super cool and it's all in one tight package as well i like how it's actually got a nice insulation cover on it so it should be really clean in the engine bay even if you have some extra length you can tuck it underneath the cowl and yeah, just a bunch of different wires that we're going to go ahead and install on the car. So pretty simple kit. This is the only thing I'll say that's an accessory. I do recommend it, especially if you're going to be pushing your car in port injection. You're going to want this sensor. Um, and then it also comes with the plugs for your flex fuel sensor so you can enable that as well. But yeah, let's go ahead and install this on the car. So to get this installed, the process is pretty simple. First of all, they've labeled all of the connections really well. So you can see this connector is going to go to the intake cam. This connector is going to go to the map sensor. So all you need to do is read the labels and you can tell where everything goes. And basically this connection splits the signal that's going to the engine. So you've got one connector that goes into the sensor and you've got the other connector that goes into the engine harness. And then tapping into that sends the signal to the motive reflex so it can read the condition of your engine and can tell when to fire your injectors and what your flex fuel reading is and all of that good stuff. Now this main connector is going to plug into your reflex and then you can see you have a bunch of other plug and play leads that can be used for auxiliary components. So if you've got a boost controller, a low pressure fuel pump, nitrous, basically anything else you'll use these wire connectors that come with the kit and these will connect to whatever your auxiliary controller is and then that will allow you to plug it directly into the plug and play kit. So you'll just connect these two wires to whatever you need and then you can plug it into the harness. 
Now I am installing this on my F3340i, so if you have a Gen 1 B58, it'll be the same. If you have a Gen 2 B58, it should be very similar, but if you have an S58, some of your sensors will be in different locations. So if you need help with that, go to Real OEM, put in an X3M or X4M to find the S58 diagrams, and it'll show you where all the sensors are so you can identify you know, your pressure sensor, your cam position, all of that good stuff. Also, the sequence of plugging the stuff in will depend on what your car has. So like I did my flex fuel sensor first because it's tucked all the way under here and kind of hard to access. If you have port injectors, spacers on your car and the injectors are underneath, you'll also probably want to install that first. So it's easier to access, but just kind of take your time and do things in the order that makes sense for your specific setup. But yeah, we'll go ahead and get this going. We'll do the part in the engine bay first. And then there is a part that's underneath the car to access one of the sensors. And we will go in the car to finalize connecting to the CAN system so we can communicate with the DME. So let's do this. So I think the first thing we're going to do is the injector harness just because that one is pretty straightforward and simple. So for the full length of the harness, basically the closest one to the reflex connector is injector six, and then five, four, three, two, and then one will be the closest one to the front of the engine. So we'll go ahead and run this underneath all the wiring, and then plug all of these in. Now, on the end of this kit, we have the PCV connector. So this will plug into the PCV heater underneath the intake. So we'll go ahead and access that. And then the connector that we are going to access is right here. So, you want to disconnect this bad boy, unplug that, and then we're going to plug in the plug and play harness. Now this process is pretty much going to be the same for all of the connections, so the first thing you do is pop out the little white tab, use a pick tool, trim tool, whatever works best for you, and then you're going to unclip the sensor, and we're going to route the plug and play harness down to this position, so that you can plug in one side into the connector and the other side into the engine harness. And like I said, this will be the same for every single sensor so that you can get that signal you need. Also make sure you tuck the wiring out of the way so that it's not you know, getting pinched by anything when you reinstall your intake. And this is a little bit of a look of how I ran the PCV wire. I just ran it behind all of the wires and as close to the engine block as possible so it's out of the way and it doesn't snag on anything. Next we're going to install this secondary harness and we're going to basically run this underneath all the hoses and everything down the same route as the port injection harness. The only thing to keep in mind is that this last one is for your crank position sensor and this is actually mounted underneath the engine so you need to run it behind the engine between the engine and the firewall. So just leave that hanging in the back. So the first thing we're going to plug into is this intake cam position sensor. And the sensor is located right here on top of your valve cover. So we're going to unplug this, plug in the plug and play harness into the sensor, and also plug in the other end into the engine harness. Then moving forward, we're going to get our pressure signal. So this goes to our charge pipe pressure sensor, not the map sensor on the intake manifold. So that's this sensor right here. Same as before, you're going to pop out the white tab, you're going to connect the reflex harness directly to the sensor, and then you're going to plug the other side of the harness into the engine harness. Now you can go ahead and pull the harness back just to clean things up a little bit, and there is an extra connector because these kits come with an extension to reach the charge pipe. You're not going to need to plug that into anything, just kind of tuck it 
underneath the rest of the wires that are running up this channel by your intake manifold. All right guys, so hopefully you can tell where I am. This is the transmission right here. That's the back of the car. So I'm on the left side of the transmission and the crank sensor is behind all of this. Now, if you have a manual transmission, you don't have any of this, so you'll be able to see the crank sensor easily. But if you have an automatic transmission, this is your transmission cooler. And based on the BMW manual, to access the crank sensor, you need to remove this entire thing. So that means disconnecting this line, draining all the coolant, disconnecting these lines, draining the transmission fluid. I did not want to do that. So I'll show you guys what I did, because here I've actually already done it. I started digging into this to figure out if there was any way to access the crank sensor without completely, you know, draining and removing the transmission cooler. And what I did was I removed this bracket and it's mounted kind of like this up there. So these two e torques are going into the engine, they are E8s, and then there are two screws in these two holes. They are T30 screws, and they go into those two holes that you see on the transmission cooler. So I'll show you guys some pictures so you can kind of see how this mounts up to the engine and holds the transmission cooler in place. And uh, it's kind of a blind job. Obviously from here you can't really see a whole lot, but if we look with our mirror, we can see our crank sensor, and that is this guy here on the right. There's another sensor to the left, so just make sure you're pulling the one to the right that's closest to the back of the car. But yeah, that gives you a little bit of a better look at it. So it's that sensor right there. That's the crank sensor. So we need to pop out that white tab. I'm going to use an L-shaped pick tool to pop that out and then I'm going to use an L-shaped plier to squeeze it and pull it out and then up here you can see one part of the plug and play harness so we'll pull that down and then plug it into the sensor and the engine harness the same way as the others so that we can get the crank signal so yeah this is definitely the most annoying aspect of the plug and play kit if you have an automatic transmission and you have this transmission cooler here, um, it's just a really tight space to work in. So get like a really small quarter inch drive socket, slowly back off those bolts, get that bracket out of the way, and then you should be able to access the crank sensor. Now to get access to those bolts, the first thing you probably want to do is remove this bracket that's right here. And so there are three. 10 millimeter nuts that need to be removed and then after you remove that nut you can basically just slide it down these lines to get it completely out of your way so here it is with everything plugged in and you can see we've got the reflex harness plugged directly into the engine harness and if we squeeze up here we can also see that it's plugged directly into the crank sensor so again just take your time with this one it takes a little bit of patience once you're done, you're going to push this wire up and out of the way so that we can reinstall the bracket and make sure it's not pinching or damaging any wires. And then just for your reference again, this is how the bracket looks fully installed. So the crank sensor is completely hidden underneath. And you can see the reflex harness wiring is kind of tucked up and out of the way so that it's not, you know, getting damaged or pinched under anything. So, yeah, now we'll do the rest of the job inside the car. Now, in order for this kit to access the CAN communication, we need to tap into the footwell module. So in order to access that, we need to remove a bunch of trim. The first thing we're going to do is remove this door sill panel. It just pulls straight up. And then underneath the glove box, we need to remove this trim panel as well. So it has two 10 millimeter screws, one on each side that we need to remove. And then there are also two electrical connectors, one for the cigarette plug and one for the footwell light. So unplug both of those and then the panel can be fully removed.
Then you can remove the actual footwell panel. Again, it just pulls straight off. And then behind it, you can see the footwell module where we'll be making all of our connections. Now the connectors we need to access are actually behind this black cover plate. So in order to remove that, we're going to need to loosen this torque screw that's holding it in place. Once you've unscrewed that, you'll pull the carpet back a little bit and that will allow you to fully remove this black cover plate. And these are the two connectors that we need to access. This one is called 3B and this one is called 2B. So the first one we're going to remove is 2B since it's closer to us. In order to remove it, you push in the button on top and then flip over the lever and it just pulls straight out. And then if you look inside the connector, you can see this little silver piece and we're going to need to remove that from the black connector. There's this little gray retaining feature that needs to be released and then we'll pull the gray clip out. Now the easiest method I've found to release that gray locking tab is just to push a pick tool in that area and then you should be able to slide out the gray piece without any issue. And if you look closely, something that's really convenient is they put reference numbers on the actual connector. So towards the left you see a 1 and on the right you see a 13. And if you flip it over in the middle area, you see a 14 and then to the left, you see a 21. So that's a nice reference to help you know how to count the connectors. And I always recommend counting pins instead of going by the wire color, because that will always be the most reliable way to make sure that you're pulling the right wire. Now 2B is going to give us our can high and can low signal. So we're going to need to disconnect pin 18 and pin 19. The way that you do that is you use the tool that came with the kit and you're going to push in on the little locking feature on the wire. And if you give it a little bit of a tug, the wire should pull straight out. Now you can see my wires are red and the other is red and blue compared to the image where it's white and yellow and black and yellow. So again, this is why I recommend going off of the pin number instead of the wire color. Now we're going to replace those wires we disconnected with wires that are attached to this body domain controller. In particular, we're going to use the green and yellow wires for the CAN signal. Now you need to pay attention to the connectors because there is a small retaining feature, just like on the ones that you removed. So you just want to make sure that those are aligned with the openings on this harness in order for them to clip into place properly. And you can see the green and yellow are going right back into 18 and 19. So just make sure you're selecting the right pinholes for each one and push them in until they lock into position. Now you can go ahead and slide it back into the main black connector and then we're going to plug it back into the footwell module and 2B is done. Now we'll go ahead and move over to 3B. So we're going to follow the same process with our pick tool, push that in. In this case, we're going to pull out the blue connector from 3B. And again, this connector has the reference numbers on it to help you with counting the pins. So just look closely on both sides. You'll see the numbers printed into the plastic and that'll help you make sure that you're pulling the pin that you want. And then we've got two more wires that we need to remove from this harness. So again, use your pin tool to unplug each wire in the same way. And then we're going to switch back over to the body domain controller and we've got the red and black wire to get our power and ground for the reflex. So again, just pay attention to where that retaining feature is on the pin, push it into the connector in the appropriate pin location and make sure it's locked and fully in position. And then just like with 2B, we're going to take the blue piece and push it back into the main connector and then reinstall 3B onto the footwell module. Now we still need those wires that we removed to communicate with the car. So we have this connector that came with the kit and you're just going to remove this white locking piece that's in the middle of it with a pick tool. And then we're going to plug in all four of the wires that we removed into this connector and that will allow us to plug it back into the body domain controller so that the car can still see those signals even though we're tapping into them for the motive reflex. It's still going to be needed for you know the rest of your sensors and stuff. So this will allow the car to run just like normal whether the motive reflex is turned on or turned off. Then you can go ahead and put your white locking piece back in place. Just keep in mind it only goes in one way so if it's not going in smoothly you may just need to turn it around and that should allow it to clip into place. And then we're going to plug that connector into the body domain controller as well. So these two pieces should just slide right into each other and snap into place. 
and then you can go ahead and reinstall that black cover again don't forget to reinstall that torque screw as well that will hold it in position now next we need to connect this wire from the reflex harness to the body domain controller and what i did is i found these little holes for dummy plugs or basically holes in the grommet that aren't being used in the firewall so i stuck a screwdriver through there to kind of get it started but i ended up needing to make the hole a little bit bigger so i used a drill and it was about a half inch bit and i drilled straight through that hole and that allowed me to pull this wire through the firewall so that i could connect it to the body domain controller it pretty much just plugs directly into the wire and then you can see on the fitting, it basically screws into place to secure it. So really simple to plug it in. And once you have all the wiring done, you can go ahead and tuck everything underneath the carpet out of the way. And it should basically just look the same as stock when you're all finished. Now, of course, the last piece is to plug in the Motive Reflex itself. The TMS kit does come with a pretty nice mounting bracket. So feel free to use that if it works for where you want to install the Reflex box. And then we're just going to kind of plug it in. And I always put mine underneath the cowl in this area. And it's nice and easy access. As well as, you know, all of the wires and everything reach. So I usually mount it right here above the fuse box. This is, of course, also the time where you can plug in any, you know, auxiliary components that you have. So in my case, I have the low pressure fuel sensor that I'm going to plug into this aux connection. And then, yeah, we're pretty much just wrapping it up at this point. So yeah, that's how the TMS kit installs. Pretty straightforward. And now I guess I want to cover a couple things because like I said, I did install the standard harness on my 440i. And I think there are a couple differences that you guys should be aware of. So first of all, a lot of people don't realize or have forgotten that the reflex does come with a harness out of the box. So you don't have to buy a separate harness. And that is one aspect of this kit is it basically adds more cost to the Motive Reflex install because now you're buying an additional harness to go with the Motive Reflex controller. So that is one con. Another thing to consider is the standard harness is a little bit easier to install. You don't have to get under the car and especially that crank sensor. It's just really difficult to access on the ZF8 cars. From what I've seen, this is primarily a Gen 1 issue. So if you have like an S58, for example, you don't have to worry about that. And if you have a manual transmission, you definitely don't have to worry about that. But for like the Gen 1 ZF8 cars where that transmission cooler is right on top of the crank sensor, it's just a lot more annoying to access. Not impossible, but it takes a little bit more patience. And one last thing is because it's kind of like a piggyback, you're basically doubling the amount of wires in the car, the connectors in the car. So that makes the engine bay a little more cluttered. And as somebody that typically likes to clean things up, that is a little bit of a drawback. You can still, you know, keep it under control and tie all the wires together so it doesn't look like a complete rat's nest. But yeah, it's just another downside to consider. But besides all of that, I think the biggest problem and the issue that people face with their motive reflex is the issues with the install. And it's actually not that difficult. It's pretty straightforward, but it's also easy to mess it up. So a lot of people end up tapping the wrong wires or like in my case, I tapped the right wire, but it didn't quite pierce the insulation. So I wasn't getting a good signal on one of the sensors. And so there are just a lot of little things that can cause issues. And I would say probably 50% of people end up having to go back through their work again, diagnose a problem in order to get the reflex fully working. And that's really what you're paying for here. The premium is because you're working with a plug and play kit that doesn't need to tap any wires. It's completely reversible and it just works out of the box. You really don't have any issues to worry about. So this worked for me perfectly. I was able to flash my motive reflex and it just worked right away. I didn't have any other problems. And that definitely was a contrast to the 440 where I was having issues. I had to run logs, figure out what sensor wasn't working, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what most people are trying to avoid, and that's where the plug-and-play kit is definitely king. So yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. Again, my affiliate link is in the video description if you guys are interested in buying the plug-and-play kit or the Motive Reflex. And I think that's it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.